fiery horse with speed of light, a cloud of dust, and a hearty high old silver, the Lone Ranger. When the early pioneers settled in the western United States, outlaws and hostile Indians made it impossible for them to maintain law and order. Cattle were stolen, banks were looted, and no one's life or property was safe. It was then that the masked rider of the plains first rode in the cause of justice. No man did more in the fight against crime and criminals, and the memory of his deeds will remain as long as the memory of the early West itself. Let us return now to those thrilling days of yesteryear. From out of the past come the thundering hoofbeats of the great horse Silver. The Lone Ranger rides again. Come on, Silver! We're heading for Night's Crossing. There's going to be trouble. Hurry on! The Texas sun blazed down on the range country, not far from the small town of Meg's Crossing. A trail wound across the prairie, a trail overlooked on one side by a cluster of rocks. And behind these rocks, a young man crouched. His face was lean and hard. His eyes were intent on the sights of his rifle, pointed toward the trail. A rider approached. The young man's finger slowly tightened on the trigger. There. That'll hold him. Here, boy. Come on, fella. we got to hightail it out of here. Steady there, boy. We're right over there to make sure, fella. But I don't reckon there's much need. I was aiming dead center. Get up there. Come on. Get up. Get up. attracted by the shot. One was Al Cook, the United States Marshal for the district. The second was the Lone Ranger, who was camped in the territory with his faithful Indian companion, Tonto. The masked man, urging his great horse Silver forward, saw the Marshal standing beside a figure on the trail. Come on, Silver! Hurry, old fellow! Hi there! What's happened? There's plenty happened. Oh, oh, Silver! Oh, fellow! Oh, boy! Oh. Is he dead, Marshal? He sure is. Just one shot, but he got him plumb through the heart. Wait. Isn't that Eric Wagner? It's Eric right enough, and I'd sure like to get my hands on the dirty sneaking coyote that shot him. He was killed with a rifle bullet. Yeah. I thought it sounded like a rifle, then when I got here, I seen it was. The man who shot him has had plenty of time to get away. He's most likely in town by now. What's that over there? Huh? 
You can see where somebody rode a horse this way. The grass is just beginning to spring up again with a horse past. By golly, I want to look at that. Those tracks must have been made by the killer. Come here. Did you find something? Look here at this bare patch of ground. You can see the hoof prints like somebody drawed a picture. Let's see. Here, Marshal. Do you see where a part of the shoe had been broken from the hoof? Yeah. You could recognize that print again anywhere. Oh, it ain't proof, though, blast it. No. Could have been possible for these prints to have been made before the killing. And I doubt it. Doubting won't help none. You're well acquainted here, aren't you? I ought to be. I was raised in these parts. Did Eric have any enemies? That's what's got me buffaloed. There weren't a better liked fellow than Eric anywhere. Huh. He owned the biggest spread around here. But he was always willing to help out anybody that needed help. And he was a doggone good neighbor. He didn't have a family, did he? The only kin Eric had was a niece up Arizona way. A niece? His brother's girl. Helen, I think her name was. Eric paid her a visit about a year ago. She's an orphan now. Seems strange he didn't bring her to live with him. He tried to hard enough, but she wanted to stay and make a go of her pa's ranch. But from what I hear, she ain't had much luck. I see. She'll get Eric spread, though. Eric always said he was leaving it to her. There's uh, one thing, Marshal. Yeah? I've been wondering why you didn't mention my mask. <laughs> I heard you call that horse of yours silver. Other horses might be called the same. Mm-hmm. But not horses like that one. I reckon I ain't fool enough to mistake you for an outlaw. Thanks. Well, I don't see much use staying here any longer. I better be getting back to town reporting this killing. Wait. But I... Don't report it, Marshal. But I've got to. You and I and the killer are the only ones that know of Eric's death. If we keep it a secret, we'll have a better chance to learn who did this. But I've got to let his niece know anyhow. She's a long way from here. Yeah, and she's blamed hard up. She'll be feeling mighty bad about this. But at least she'll know she ain't in danger of starving no longer. Then I'll make a bargain with you. Yeah? If you'll keep this a secret here until I get back, I'll ride to Arizona. To see Eric's niece? Yes. But what did you want to make a trip like that for? You say Eric had no enemies here. His niece inherits his fortune. Probably she had nothing to do with his death, but I'd like to judge for myself. Oh, shucks. She wouldn't have had nothing to do with a thing like this. Is it a bargain? Well, if there's anybody but you that asked me, I... Yes? I'll do it. Good. Here, Silver. Say, where are you going? To Arizona. <laughs> right yep. now? Uh, right now. And I'm depending upon you to keep your word with me. Hi -yo, hi -yo. Well, I'll be blessed. A ranch owned by Helen Wagner was barely making expenses. A disastrous winter had reduced the herd to almost nothing. And only young Tom Forbes out of what had once been a large crew, remained loyal to his worried employer. We see Helen and Tom as they return to the ranch house after a ride across the range. I, I'm afraid I can't hold on much longer, Tom. You ain't figured on selling out, are you, Helen? I've been thinking of it. We're scarcely clear enough this year for taxes. All we need is to uh, stock the range again. And that takes money. I got some cash saved. Please, Tom. Shucks, I know you told me not to mention it again. And that cash is only setting in the bank. There ain't nothing I'd rather do than give you the lend of it. I couldn't take money from you, Tom. There's one way you could. Yes? If I was married to you, I... Tom, it... I think a lot of you, but... But you're still thinking of that no-good Drake Spencer. That's so, ain't it? We... We won't talk about that. Here's the house. I think I'll go right in. You'll unsaddle the horses, won't you? Sure. Who there? Who there? Oh. Oh. It's time to start dinner. Howdy, Helen. Greg. Ain't you glad to see me? Oh, but, but we quarreled. Oh, oh, shucks. I got to thinking it over and I seen where I was wrong. I reckon I was just jealous of Tom. Now, oh, hold on. You aren't jealous of me. The only reason you picked that fight with Helen was to get out of marrying her after she lost most of her cattle. Why, Tom, you... Greg, stop it. He can't talk to me like that. You don't blame well I ain't told you nothing but the truth. Tom. You never were fair to Greg. I and mean, you ain't never been nothing but blind where he was concerned. Honey, how are things on the ranch now? Pretty bad. Then I'm asking you to forget that fight we had and marry me. I reckon that'll prove I ain't after cash. <laughs> There's something mighty funny about you getting so almighty big-hearted this sudden. I ain't talking to you. Honey, what do you say? Well, I, I don't know what to say. You, you've been gone so long. I've been prospecting. 
I was hoping I'd strike it rich so as I could give you all the things I'd like to. Oh, great. Prospecting. <laughs> that takes hard work. And if you ever done something like that, it'd be the first time. That's what I've been doing. Anybody see you at it? I ain't seen anybody for months. I was way back in the hills. Yeah. Tom, you shouldn't... Don't pay no mind to him, Helen. What do you say? It, if you really mean it this time... By I... golly, I, I won't stand for it. Tom! You keep your nose out of it. I won't. This. I ain't gonna stand here and see Helen took in by a rat like you. If I can't stop her no other way, I'll... I'll gun whip you. You what? You heard me and I meant it. Stop it! In fact, I don't need no gun for your That's kind. just about enough. And take this! Oh, <laughs> you... You're not break down. And when he gets up, I'll knock him down again. You broke. I ain't no sneak like him. Greg, honey, are you hurt? Not too much to fix him. Greg, don't shoot. I'll... Okay. That rope. A mask man. Hold him, Tom. The, the engine rope, Greg. Let me go. Let me loose. You're not getting loose until we leave. Come on, Tom. You want me? We're riding. But what? Are you coming willingly, or do we have to rope you, too? You've got the drop on me. Get mounted. What are you doing? Who are you? You may learn that later. Hurry, Tom. <laughs> If you didn't have the drop well, on I you... Have. You meddling crook. Let me alone. Tom, I... will let you go when we start. Here, Silver. Please, don't hurt Tom. He'll be back. But get, please. Get started. Get up there. Get up. Go, oh, Silver. <laughs> Guarded by the Lone Ranger and Tonto, young Tom Forbes was taken to the small camp near Helen Wagner's ranch. There, at a signal from the masked man, they reined in their horses. Oh, 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 oh. Get down, Tom. What's the idea of this? You and I are going to talk. But why did you... I haven't think... been here long. But Tonto and I have asked questions. From what we've learned... You can be trusted. That sounds good, coming from a mask, comrade. I'm not an outlaw. Then why can't you show your face? That's something I won't explain. But I think I can prove I'm your friend. Yeah? You think a lot of Helen Wagner, don't you? Enough to give my life for her, for to do any good. I've heard as much. What do you know about Greg Spencer? Him? Uh, he's the biggest crook ever came out of these parts. You can prove that? No, but I'd bet on it. Say, what are you so interested in him for? Tonto and I arrived here from Meg's Crossing in Texas yesterday. Uh, what are you aiming to do? Helen had an uncle there. Uh-huh. Old Eric Wagner. He was here last summer. You met him? No, I was away driving a trail herd to Marco when he was here. And I remember the letter he wrote saying he was coming. Eric was murdered. Huh? And near his body, we found the prints of a horse with a broken shoe. Well, I'll be... And that Don't... print was identical with a print made by Greg Spencer's horse. How'd you know that? I was waiting to speak to Helen when Greg rode up. I stayed out of sight, but I saw the trail he made. But, well, he said he'd been prospecting in the hills. You didn't believe that story yourself. It would serve as a good excuse for his absence all this time. It would take quite a while to ride to Meg's Crossing from here and back. Then that explains it. Yes? If Greg shot Eric, he knew darn well she'd come into what Eric owned. And that's true. Greg made up a fight with Helen when she lost most of her own critters. And then most likely he got the idea of shooting Eric so as Helen would get his ranch. That sounds probable. The dirty skunk. Pretending to want to marry her when she's broke and knowing all the time she's the owner of one of the biggest spreads in Texas. Will you help me trap him? Help you? We'll go back there right now and pick him up. No. Well, why the not? The prints in his absence aren't evidence. We turned him over to the law now. He'd be tried and freed. And a man can't be tried a second time for the same killing. But we got to do something. And we will. But if you ain't got no more evidence than that... I right? haven't, Tom. But something you said suggested a plan. Yeah? Listen to me. There are some things I want to know. And if you can give me the answers I hope for, I think Greg will go to jail for Eric's murder. The curtain falls on the first act of our thrilling Lone Ranger drama. Before the next exciting scenes, please permit us to pause for just a few moments. Now to continue our story. Eric Wagner, a wealthy Texas rancher, was shot from ambush, and his body was discovered by the United States Marshal and the Lone Ranger. The Marshal promised to keep Eric's death a secret, and the masked man rode to Arizona to inform Helen Wagner of her uncle's death. On his arrival, he found that the hoof prints of Greg Spencer's horse 
corresponded to prints found near the scene of the murder. The ranger took Tom Forbes to his camp in order to question him. And now, as our second act opens, we see Tom back at the ranch house once more, talking to Helen. And the masked man didn't try to rob you, Tom? He ain't no outlaw, Helen. But what did he want? Now, that's something he made me promise not to tell right now. But I reckon you'll know all about it in time. No, I'm curious. Well, uh, I'll give my word. Tom, there's something... Yeah? The last couple of days, there's been things missing. I don't know who could have taken them. You mean somebody stealing things? I had some rings in my room. They're gone. And some gold spurs that were given to Paul once. Oh, God. Who could have taken them things? I can't think. Say, I'll bet it was that sneaking... Don't. Gr- I know what you're going to say, and I won't listen to you. Well, maybe you'll learn better someday. I, I forgave you for the fight you had with Greg the other day, but you can't say things about him to me. I don't think you know oh, just... Oh, there's Greg now. Don't he ever stay away from here. Don't you fight with him again. Fight with him. I'll do more than that before I'm through. They're outside talking. I'd better see what's in that desk while I still got the chance. Here it is. Hope it ain't luck. It ain't by God. Now, let me see. I gotta find it. No, that ain't it. Oh, where in tarnation? My gosh, this is it. I'll just... Honey, I just had to see you. Tom, what on earth are you doing? He just now took something out of that desk. I seen him slip it into his pocket. Tom, is that true? Well, uh, I... Look at him. You can't even say anything. What did you take? Now, Helen, I didn't take anything you'd want. What is it? I can't tell you. You blasted thief. You're the fellow that took them things Helen was telling me about. That ain't so. Then what are you doing taking things from that desk like that? We caught you and you can't lie out of it. Oh, Tom, I, I never would have believed you a thief. I always said he weren't no good. Maybe I can explain later, but I can't tell you nothing now. I, I just can't. You could explain if you were innocent. You've got to trust me. We ain't trusting you... nobody. Give back what you took. Not by a darn side. Do as Greg says, and and perhaps we can forget about the other things that have been stolen. Oh, I, I couldn't bear to let folks know you were dishonest. Folks can think what they want, but I ain't putting nothing back. You just think you ain't. I'll be going now. Feeling the way you do, Helen, I reckon you won't want me around here anymore. Hold on. Yeah? Come back here. I'm going. No, you ain't. Draw on me, will you? You missed. Greg, let him go. Don't go after him. I'll get that sneak thief. Please, let him go. I'll drill him. I... Blast it, Helen. You shoved my arm. I did it on purpose. I don't care what Tom's done, but I don't want him shot. Yeah? Well, I'm getting the sheriff. And when the law catches up with him, he'll be sitting in jail where he belongs. Spencer mounted and rode to town for the sheriff, in spite of Helen's pleas. Then he accompanied the sheriff and his deputies on the search for Tom, but the young man seemed to have disappeared completely. When the sheriff and Greg were finally convinced that the manhunt was a failure, they returned to the ranch house. I sure never figured Tom Forbes to be a thief. Well, he is. We seen him taking something from the desk ourselves. Did you find out what it was? No, but... Well, maybe Miss Helen has gone through the desk and found out what's missing by this time. And if you ever find that polecat, you throw him in jail. I reckon I know my duty without being told. Here we are. Who? Who there? Who? there? Who? Did you find him? No. But he ain't going to be able to hide out forever. I'm glad you didn't. I thought it was you he stole from, Miss Helen. Uh, yes, You but... ain't feeling sorry for that hombre, are you? You know I'm not. He's always been a good friend to me, until now. Then forget about him. What was missing? I don't know. Huh? I went through the desk carefully, and I had some money there, but that isn't gone. That's most likely what he was after, but we come too soon. But you told me he took something. He did. He must have. Of course, there's a lot of papers I keep in the desk, too. Some of those could be gone, but oh, I can't think of anything of value. Well, anyhow... He must have taken that other stuff. Oh, I don't know what to think. Well, I'll be getting back to town. I'll keep an eye out for Tom, and if I find him, I'll hold him in jail till you bring charges against him. Steady there. You ought to find him before he skips out of this part of the country, Sheriff. Uh-huh, maybe. 
Well, good day to you, Miss Helen. Goodbye, Sheriff. Get up there. Come on. Get up there, boy. Get up there. Get up there. Oh, I wish you hadn't told the sheriff about this, Greg. I reckon it's about time you and me got hitched, Helen. You're too darn soft-hearted. What you need is a man to look after things for you. Yeah. You still want to marry me? Of course I do. Well, perhaps... And the I... sooner, the better. Not too soon, Greg. We, we ought to have more time to think it over. I don't need to think it over. I care a heap for you, and I reckon you know it. Do you, really? Well, you're blame right. How about getting hitched right now? Oh, but... I can get the parson, and he can do the job tomorrow. Not tomorrow. And why not? Well, I couldn't get married that soon. Well, I want a day set for sure. Give me two weeks. And then you'll marry me? Yes. Then two weeks it is. And then, honey, we'll have the biggest wedding that was ever seen around these parts. Two weeks passed. While preparations for the wedding were being made, everyone for miles around was invited to the ceremony, and nothing was spared to make the occasion festive. Meanwhile, in the Lone Ranger's camp, young Tom Forbes was close to despair. Honest friend, every time I think of Helen getting hitched to that skunk, I see red. You'll have to be patient, Tom. Patient? What I'd like to do is go gunning for Greg and shoot it out with him until one of us drops. That would solve nothing. Uh, maybe not, but it'd make me feel a heap better. Do you think Helen loves Greg? No, I don't. She might have once, but I figure she got over it without knowing it herself. Only she's so darn straight she'd feel guilty about changing her mind. Yes, I can understand that. But the wedding's set for tomorrow. A lot can happen between now and then. But why can't we go through with our scheme now? We've got to wait for Tata to return. I sure wish he'd get here. Long journey to Meg's Crossing and back. But he ought to have been here by now. I expect him today. Well, if anything goes wrong tomorrow... It won't, Tom. There's one thing you can depend upon, that a man coward enough to shoot without giving warning will still be a coward when it comes to the test. Yeah, I reckon. But I'm hoping the wedding will go through anyhow. Huh? Perhaps you'll understand what I mean later. You want Helen to marry that skunk? Well, look here. Our I... waiting is almost ended, Tom. There's Tonto. And he's brought the man we want. Now, Tom, we have only to wait until tomorrow and see what happens. The next day, guests for the wedding arrived at the Wagner Ranch. Some came in the saddle, others by buckboard or wagon. Great stores of food had been cooked. And inside the ranch house, there was singing and gaiety. Helen, of all the crowd, seemed unable to smile. Her lips were set, and her eyes betrayed the evidence of recent tears. She tried to face the crowd and hide her true feelings. Well, honey, what's ailing you anyhow? It's nothing. <laughs> well, I always heard that girls take to crying before they got hitched, and I guess you ain't no different from the rest that way. Yes. Howdy, Miss Helen. You don't mind if I introduce a friend of mine, do you? Of course not. Hey, step up here, Al. Miss Helen, this is Al Cook. He's a lawman, too. Pleased to make your acquaintance, Miss Wagner. How do you do? You, you're a lawman? Sure he is. He's a U.S. Marshal down Texas way. Uh, this is Greg Spencer, Al. Uh-huh. I think I've seen him somewhere before. You couldn't have. I've never been to Texas. Yeah? What's going on over there? What? Why, that same mess, man. And Tom's with him. Arrest him, Sheriff. Miss Helen. What do you want with me? What's Tom doing here? We came to ask you to put off the wedding for a short while. What are you buttoning in for? Don't you think Helen should wait for her uncle to get here for the marriage? But, well, but I, I don't... I wrote him, but he didn't answer. He did write you a letter. You're wearing a mask. You're an outlaw. Ask the marshal. You know this fellow, Al? I do. And you can take my word for it that he ain't a crook, Sheriff. Then what's he lying for? Lying? Helen's uncle never wrote her. Suppose you look at this. Well, give it here. What's the matter? What? Why, that... Quiet, Helen. But I, I... Don't you say nothing. You leave the mask till I handle this. Well? Helen's uncle couldn't have written this. He says he's on his way here, doesn't he? But he's dead. Oh. Sheriff, 
Arrest the masked fella, too. He must have wrote this letter himself. Helen, is this your uncle's handwriting? Well, of course, Didn't but... Didn't I tell you to hush up? I think that proves it isn't a forgery. But it's got to be. Helen's uncle was shot and killed. Greg, you never told me that. Well, I... I just heard it the other day. That's right, Miss Wagner. I'm sorry you had to learn it this way, but it's so. Uncle, dead, oh... And I'm arresting Greg here for the being the killer. No, no. How'd you know where Wagner had been killed? Well, a fellow from Texas, well, he rode through here and, and told me. That's a lie. Only two people besides the murderer knew of his death, the masked man and myself. But, but I and tell when you... when you said he was dead, that proved you must have been the killer. Greg, a, a murderer? Helen, can't you see what he did? He left you when you lost your cattle. And he killed off your uncle and come back here to marry you, knowing you'd get your uncle's ranch. That ain't so, I tell you. What's more, you said you'd never been in Texas. But I seen you there. Well, I, I was prospecting when Helen's uncle was killed. That was your alibi. I've looked at the prints left by your horse, and they're just the same as some fellow left where Eric was shot. You won't never get me. What the first man lays a hand on me gets grilled. I'll throw my hand. The last man shot him. I only hit his gun. This is your territory, Sheriff. Arrest Greg. That's what I'm doing. And I'll take him back to Texas with me. Blast you when I get out. I'll you swing. won't. We hang folks for murder. Come on, Grace. Come on. Um, Come on. This letter was what you took from my desk. Sure it was, Helen. That's the letter your uncle wrote last year when he was coming here. But I, I couldn't have let you know what I took or it would have, would have spoiled it all. It was the masked man's scheme. He knew the side of that letter tricked Greg into admitting he knew of Eric's death. I'll bet we'll find it was Greg yourself that stole them things from Helen. Oh, Tom. Uh, uh, look here, Helen. Yes? You've got everything here set for a wedding. What's the use of wasting it? What do you mean? I got a ring here I'd sure like to put on your finger. And I didn't steal it either. Do you, do you think we should? You're blame right we should. The mask fellow planned it and anything he wants, he's going to have. But then I... I say yes. <laughs> just heard is a copyrighted feature of the Lone Ranger Incorporated.